I've just had a, a memory about my older son when he was 16. He had two pretty major events happen within two weeks of each other to the, to the day. The first one was um, he got hit by a car. He'd been smoking dope and was crossing a major highway and his friend called out and said, don't go. And he got thrown over the top of the car and his friend ran all the way home to tell me. He said, um, it, his, my son's first reaction was, oh, mum's going to kill me. He was already nearly dead. <laughs> Um, and then two weeks later, he'd been at a school dance and he was coming home and um, he and his friend got uh, two guys stopped because they were dressed in fancy dress after school dance and these guys thought they were gay yep. and uh, they were going to beat the crap out of them with a baseball bat. Yep. And, um, my son said, all of a sudden, Mum, I just intuitively knew that it was time to run, and I screamed, and they got away from me. Yeah. And I know that's got to be about me. Yeah. Um, and particularly that it happened two weeks apart. Yeah. And I guess I'm just a little confused. I mean, I was born, brought up in a violent household, so... Yeah. Um. The first, the first incident and the second incident are due to different emotions within you. The second incident is due to your violent childhood and the fears and other emotions that you have about that still that you need to allow yourself to release. Your, what will happen in your children's life often is that, see, often we don't feel fear for ourselves. Once we, when we, if we've grown up in a violent household, what often happens is that we detune so much from the fear, we go into anger, rage and other types of emotions and we detune from the fear. But the fear is still within us. And often then it's the only way to trigger it is through our children. And, and so what, what happens is that um, our law of attraction, which is the fear that's in the child, actually attracts events which then trigger our own fear. And that's what you need to allow yourself to process. This, the feelings that you have about the violence abusive childhood you have um, and some of it was to do with sexuality right, as well so you need to let you know what I'm speaking about there in the, the the second the second the first issue which is your, your son you know having a accident um, the key thing there is to look at your own emotions firstly after you heard about the accident so go into those emotions but then ask yourself, if you can, the emotions that you felt that day, like before the accident occurred as well. Now that's a lot harder generally, unless we, we know to ask those kind of questions of ourselves. But what I do now is I ask myself, you know, what was I doing before that occurred? Before that accident that was occurred? Ten, just about ten years ago. So yeah, so it's hard now. Yeah. I'm sure I'll be able to go in another day. And the reason why his first words were, Mum's going to kill me, up from the police. Yeah. And emotionally. Yeah, see, everything that is said is said for some reason from the law of attraction as well. So you can, a lot of times I notice that people don't hear what they're saying to me when they come and ask me about a problem. And the reason why is that they're, all, they're just far, so far detuned from the emotion that the actual words that they're saying to me tell all, me all the emotions that they're actually denying within themselves. And I can feel the emotions at the same time, so then I can have that correlation. But most of the time, the person's already telling themselves the answer to their own issue. Yeah. And, and I do realise he would have grown up feeling a lot of my unresolved fears. Yeah, you have a lot of unresolved fears about danger and safety. And uh, they're very much involved in that first incident that, uh, of, of his accident. I was very overprotective. Yeah. 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 